Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. All from four students. Okay, happy to see you all again. Huh? Okay, I think we start now. Huh? Right, four to nine. I try to make it uh, not too long, uh, make it short. Uh -huh. Okay, first thing we are going to do is we want to finish up the last, want to dis uh, finish discuss the last part of chapter three. Chapter three is man make satellite, remember or not? That set of question now, uh, man make satellite. I want to finish up the question. Then after that, I start chapter four. Chapter four, uh, okay? Right. First, let's look at a paper here. Huh? Okay, I want to share with you something here. Okay, this set of paper, you all remember or not? This set of paper, man makes satellite. Okay, you look at the paper, I think, I hope you have the paper. Lah, huh? Okay, man makes satellite. Now someone want to come in. Let them come in first. Uh, uh, please get ready this paper. Uh. Maybe some of you already try try answer the question already, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We look at the answer. Uh. I'm going to explain to you one by one. Uh. Okay, you look at question number one. Just focus on question number one. Let me take out the pen first. Uh. Okay, question number one. A rocket is launched at the surface of the Earth. As the rocket moves away from the Earth, move higher, what happens to the weight? The weight is related with the gravity, right? Not? When this rocket moves higher, the gravity will become smaller. The higher you go up to the sky, the smaller the gravity, right? So when a gravity is smaller than a weight, uh, weight W equal to mass times gravity mg, right not? Okay, that's why the weight decreases. Why the weight decreases? The higher you go, why the answer is decreases, right? Why? Uh, Justin, why the weight decreases right? when the rocket go away from the Earth surface? Uh, the gravity is weaker. Yeah, because the gravity becomes smaller. When a gravity becomes smaller, so the weight will become smaller. Lah, huh? This question no issue. Lah, huh? Okay, question number two. Uh, this one is a bit difficult. Question, uh, question number two. Let's uh, study the question first, okay? A satellite mass 120 kilo, a satellite uh, orbiting the Earth of a radius and orbit of radius. This is an orbital radius, uh, 6,600 kilometers. The satellite is then boosted into higher orbit. Okay, At first, uh, the satellite is in this distance, 6,600 kilometers. Then later on, the satellite are bring, or we say, boosted to a higher level, to 6,900 kilometers, further away, further up. So now the question is, what is a change in the gravitational potential energy? Ah, remember, there's another formula, important formula to find gravitational potential energy. You know, in this uh, man-made satellite, ah, uh, okay. So the answer is C lah. But how to get C? I show you here. Uh, you look at here, lah. Uh. the solution is here. Can see, man, everyone, look at here, lah. Uh. Okay, uh, this is a formula to find gravitational potential energy. Okay, U is gravitational potential energy. Uh, it's negative one, you know, because this potential energy is go against the gravity one. Gravity is coming down to the earth. This gravitation, uh, this potential energy is going up against, uh, against the gravity, so it's negative value. In the formula, may one got a negative one, gravitational potential energy related to this uh, satellite or this thing. Uh, the formula is this. Uh, if negative, this one is constant gravitational, uh, big G, uh, and M times M. 
these two M means that it's a mass of the Earth and mass of the satellite. Both masses are we multiply now and divide by R. R is a distance, okay? Distance, one distance is 6,600 kilometers. You remember or not? The other distance is 6,900 kilometers, so it's different. So there are two, you know, to find the change in the gravitational potential, right? Okay, you must know. Gravitational potential energy, nah? let's look at the question again. Nah? Okay. Oh, two pieces are here. Sorry, I'm not this one again. Okay. One is at this distance, the other one is further. Okay, which potential energy nah, is bigger? Eh? When nearer to the surface of the Earth or further away? You must know, you know. Nearer potential energy is actually bigger. When it go higher, right? the gravitational potential energy becomes smaller. You know why? Because further away from the Earth, right, the gravity becomes small. When gravity is smaller, the potential energy becomes smaller. Lah. Okay, that's why you see the, the solution is like this. Okay. So we take final gravitational potential energy. You calculate two. Lah. One is initial potential energy. The other one is final potential energy. You factorize and you minus lah. Okay. Radius one minus radius two. Okay. Radius one is the initial distance. Okay. You see the formula lah. Why the formula become like this? Because actually there are two. One is for six thousand six hundred kilometer r. The other one potential energy is for six thousand nine hundred. That's why you minus. You want to find the difference, so you minus, isn't it? The initial, the bigger potential energy, R1, uh, 6,600 6, 6, is nearer, bigger potential energy. Minus the smaller. Uh, yes. I didn't see huh? Someone asking question now? Uh? Mm. No one? Uh? Okay. Uh, Okay, this formula comes uh, is you take the bigger potential energy minus the smaller potential energy because you want to find the difference. Okay, now take G value, this value are uh, the constant value you know already. One uh, mass one is a uh, satellite mass is 120 kilometer kilogram. Sorry, this mass is a mass of the earth 6 times 10 to the power of 24. Remember now. Uh, this is a mass of satellite. This is a mass of the Earth, right? And this R1, okay, R1 is 6,600 kilometer, change to meter, you add three zero, okay? And this one is a further distance, the radius are longer distance. The satellite boosted higher, right? 6,900 kilometer, change to meter, okay? okay. That's me, come on, you're talking to two of you. Uh. <laughs> right? Okay, uh, when you need to use a calculator, right? Press very, very careful. Then finally, you get this answer. Okay? Use a calculator. Uh, okay? This is a change in the gravitational potential energy. Uh. To find the change, change uh, you take the bigger gravitational potential minus the smaller one. Uh. This is nearer la, 6,600 kilometer, the potential energy bigger. 6,900 kilometer away, potential energy smaller. So I take bigger, big one minus small one. La, huh? So you get this formula. La. All right. Okay. Copy down this. Huh? Uh, later you can refer. La. Right. So the answer is decrease of. 3.16 times 10 power 8. The gravitational energy decreases. When it go higher, remember, go higher, gravity is smaller. So the correct potential energy becomes smaller. Okay, huh? Right. Okay, next question. Question number three. Okay. A planet has a mass 5 times 10 power 24 kilogram. Radius, the distance. 
and the energy required to lift a mass of two kilogram from its surface to the outer space. Okay, to lift the mass of two kilogram from the surface of the earth uh, means you need to find the velocity, escape velocity. Okay, let me tell you what is escape velocity. Uh. Okay, everyone living on earth here, right? You, we have gravitational gravity pulling us, so we are standing, sitting here, understand? Let's say you want to run away from the gravity, you want to move, escape from the earth, right? So you must have a certain velocity, okay? You must have, you must fly up uh, with a certain velocity, okay? This velocity, we call it escape velocity. Escape means uh, escape from the gravitational. So you want to escape from the earth, go into the outer space, right? So you must have certain speed when you know, okay? So to find escape velocity, so this is a formula now, uh, escape velocity to, to escape from the earth, use this formula, 2 g m. Uh, m is the mass of the earth, not the mass of the object or satellite, no. Divide by r, r is the radius. Lah. So you substitute the value to constant g value, this number, lah. m, mass of the earth, given in the question, right? And the radius, the distance, 6 times 1, 10 power 6. Then you use a calculator, calculate here, you get this. Uh, this is an escape velocity, right? It's not the answer yet at all. Meaning that now, uh, to run away from the earth, run away from the gravity of the earth, right? You must fly up to the sky with this velocity. One day when you, you have a rocket, uh, the rocket velocity is higher than this value, right? Okay, then the rocket can escape from the earth, then go to the outer state. You might have this speed, you know. Okay, this is an escape velocity. Okay, you know you have to escape velocity already, but the question asking for energy, you know. The energy required. So energy, of course, is kinetic energy, la, half mv squared, right? You have the velocity already, then use kinetic energy formula, half mv squared to calculate. Half m is the m of mass of the earth. V, take this value, put inside here, square it. Okay, I got no space to write, so you just substitute the V here, substitute the mass into kinetic energy formula, calculate, you get this answer, right? So the answer is down here. Lah. Huh? So this is the kinetic energy needed to escape from the earth. Understand? So you calculate the escape velocity. Then finally, calculate the escape kinetic energy, uh, the kinetic energy, okay? Understand? Okay, next question, number four. Okay, uh. the escape velocity, uh, let me test you all now, uh. I explained to you already. Okay, what is escape velocity? Uh? Ho, ho, one yin. Are you there, ho, one yin? Ho, ah. Uh. Are you there now? Nah? Ah, very shy one. Don't want to answer one. Nah. Come on. Are you there? Come on. Nah? Don't want to answer also. Okay, I'll come back to you. Lah. Justin. Justin. Nah. Justin? Uh, yes. Justin, nah, can you tell the rest? Nah. Nah, what is escape velocity? Nah? Nah? Escape velocity escape. is what? Uh, uh, what is escape velocity? It's the velocity of an object yeah. to escape, escape from, from the, the surface of the, of the uh, earth. Escape from the gravitational pulling of the earth. You want to escape from the earth, you must have escape velocity. Huh? Okay, escape velocity. Mm -hmm. Q1 already, uh, this is an escape velocity, no? near to this value, just now we calculated, no? this one, 11,000, you know, near to 11,000 meters per second, this is an escape velocity, uh, this number, like, you have to remember, you know, how fast you must run, how fast you must fly, you want to escape from the earth, you want to go away from the earth, you must have minimum 11,000, uh, 1.110 power 4, lah. 
is roughly 11,000 meter per second speed or not, this value we calculated here just now. So this is the escape velocity. So now, what is the escape velocity from a point at a high height of 0.2 r from the Earth's surface? Okay, so means slightly higher already now. This value la, escape velocity exactly on the surface of the Earth, right? Now, they ask you to calculate another escape velocity, which is slightly higher la, at a point, a height of 0.2 r from the Earth's surface. Meaning that like this, huh? this is the Earth. From here, you want to escape, right? Want to escape on the Earth, so the velocity is 1.110 power 4. Huh? Now slightly higher, zero, another 0 0.2 arm up here. From here, you want to escape. So what is the velocity? Now they ask you to calculate. Okay, look at the left side. This is the formula. Okay. So this formula, huh? okay. This one is the... Uh, 0 0.2 r further distant one on the v you are going to find another one is i take the ratio la huh? take this uh, v divided by another v equal this formula divided by another la so meaning that this one is on the surface uh, on the surface one another formula put here uh, this one is on the surface okay you want to find the, the another velocity right v over the velocity, escape velocity on off equal, same, use this formula. This formula V is the distance is 1.2 R, right? Because off is R, you add another 0 0.2, so become 1.2 R, okay? Divide by this one, divide change to multiply, so you double it, you see or not? Okay? So use ratio method, huh? this is a velocity, the new velocity you want to find, divide by the original escape velocity, equal to same formula, but the R is 1.2, because you add another 0 0.2, huh? 1.2 R, divide by this formula, change to multiply, you double it. Okay, now cancel this one, cancel, cancel the R, okay? So, Use a calculator to press the value here, then cross over, and you get this answer 1 times 10 to the power 4. Okay, 1 times 10 to the power 4, so the answer is B. Lah. Okay, yeah, okay, number five. What keeps an Earth satellite moving in its orbit? Okay, you must be wondering, you know, this is an Earth, the satellite is moving you now, moving in the sky. So must have something to keep the satellite keep moving on, on top of the Earth, isn't it? So the force uh, keep uh, the satellite moving in a certain system is gravitational attraction force between the satellite and the Earth. Because between the Earth and the satellite, in between you must have a force, right? Gravitational attraction force. Lah. Okay, this gravitational uh, attraction force will make sure this satellite remains in the sky. Okay, all right, so we have finished this already. Okay, next. Subject question. Uh. Okay, read the question first. Okay, you read the question. A satellite with a mass 1500 is 4.2 times 10 power 7 a meter away from the center. Mean this is a distant R. This is a mass. This satellite is geostationary satellite and the mass of the Earth is this value. Okay, what is meant by geostationary satellite? If you don't know yet, huh? you never follow the previous lesson, you better learn now and all. So, geostationary satellite, okay. Let me explain now. Uh, you see the answer. Geostationary satellite is a satellite that revolve. Revolve means uh, routing the Earth. Okay, revolve around the Earth at the same speed as the Earth orbit. Meaning that is like this lah. The satellite is up here. The Earth is turning one twenty-four hour make one turn one, isn't it? Okay, you see now. Uh, 
when the off is turning, uh, the satellite also follow turning one, you know, same speed. Meaning that uh, the turning speed of this satellite, same as the turning speed of the Earth on itself, right? So this kind of satellite is called geostationary satellite. Okay, what is the advantage of this kind of satellite? Now you see that uh, when the satellite turning with the same speed of the speed of turning of the Earth, right? Meaning that uh, it will always stay in the fixed position. Let's say, uh, I'll give one example. Let's say the satellite is above Malaysia, Malaysia, on top of Malaysia sky, right? So because the Earth is turning, one, 24 hours make one turn, right? Our Earth, one day. Then this satellite also turning with the same speed, you know, also one day, 24 hours make one turn. So meaning that, the satellite and the Earth are turning with the same speed. So this satellite will always stay constant in the sky of Malaysia. Because follow the same speed, it turn like that, isn't it? Uh, remember now, uh, this kind of satellite is called geostationary satellite. Okay? Satellite revolve around the Earth at the same speed as the Earth orbit. Same speed with the Earth now, uh, the turning speed of the Earth. Uh, Okay, the function of geosignal satellite, okay, satellite function, you know, uh, as a communication satellite for handphone, for television, or this sort of thing, uh, communication satellite for telecommunication, okay? Let's say you want to make handphone, you want to make phone call, can I not? You want to make phone call, all your phone call must go up to the satellite from here, then we go back to KL, or go up to the sky first, okay? This one is very expensive, okay? Yeah, calculate the velocity of satellite. Uh, this is velocity of the satellite, not escape velocity. Yeah. Uh, okay. To find velocity of a satellite, okay. So the formula is square root g m over r. Okay. You see the different uh, formula or not? This is just to find the orbital velocity. Orbital velocity means uh, how fast a satellite must orbit around the Earth to maintain the, the, uh, the position, understand? So this is orbital velocity. Okay, you have two velocity, you know, one is orbital velocity. The other one just now you learn, right? Escape velocity, so they are different, now. Huh? Escape velocity means a velocity needed to run away, to move away from the Earth. That one is escape velocity. Uh, that formula same, we need add a two here. When you have a two here, la, two mm, la, okay, the formula. So now this is orbital velocity, means how fast a satellite need to orbit, how fast, okay? So the formula is square root g m over r. G constant value, this constant value very important, yeah, you remember. Mass of the Earth, okay, and r is a distance, distance of a satellite from the Earth. Uh, then use a calculator. The calculation of chapter three are all involving very big numbers, so you have to be very careful. Understand? Then you get this value. Okay. So meaning that now uh, this satellite the speed is only three thousand ninety meter per second. So by moving with this speed now, uh, so the satellite will stay in the constant position now. Uh, okay. With the this kind of speed, okay, orbital speed, okay, or orbital velocity. Okay, calculate the centripetal acceleration. Uh, centripetal acceleration, just remember the formula. You also have learned in lesson two, right? The acceleration from centripetal, anything turning around must have a, you see, this is a earth, so the, Satellite is turning, right? It's turning. So you must have, when something is turning around you, so you will have this centripetal acceleration, right? Formula is V square over R. Square of the velocity multiply the distance. Okay, just put it inside now. So you calculate this one. So this is a centripetal acceleration of the satellite. Okay? Yeah? This one is a velocity. This one is an acceleration. Okay, understand? So you see now, uh, when satellite is routing the Earth line, you, you can even find the velocity, you know. 
and also you can even find the acceleration. What is the acceleration of the the satellite routing the Earth? Understand? Okay, yeah. Okay. Question number two. To escape from gravitational pull of gravity entirely, right? A rocket must achieve the escape velocity. I told you just now, escape velocity is very important. Huh? To escape from the gravitational pull of Earth, right? You must have certain speed, you know. So you must achieve a minimum speed, escape velocity, mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, or given. Okay. What is meant by escape velocity? Uh, this statement, you better memorize it. What is escape velocity? It's a minimum velocity needed by an object, rocket, uh, whatever, uh, an object on the Earth's surface to overcome the gravitational force to escape to the outer space. Uh, understand? So read again the statement now, uh, remember it, you know. If people ask you what is escape velocity, you want to escape from the Earth, right? Okay, this is the answer. The minimum velocity needed by an object, this object can refer to rocket, aeroplane, even human being. You want to run away from the Earth, so can, okay? On the Earth's surface to overcome the gravitational force. You want to escape from the Earth, you must overcome the gravitational force from the Earth to escape to the outer space. Understand now? Right? Okay, number two, P. Calculate the escape velocity required by the rocket. Uh, now you ask to find the escape velocity of the rocket. If the rocket want to escape from gravitational pull, okay, use this formula now, you see? 2 gm over r. Okay, just now the formula, no two, right? The one is orbital velocity. This one is escape velocity, is different now. Huh? Uh, you see here, no? This one is the velocity of the satellite, not escape velocity, just a normal velocity. Okay, orbital velocity. Orbital velocity means the velocity of the satellite to orbit the Earth. Orbital velocity, right? This formula. You add a two here, so it becomes escape velocity. Huh? No, you see? Escape velocity two times g times the mass of Earth, the distance. Distance now 6370 kilometer, change to meter, you add 301. Use a calculator, calculate carefully, you get the answer. Uh, then I told you, right? You want to escape from the Earth, your velocity must be near to 11,000 meter per second. I told you the value is 11,000. 11,000 meter per second uh, is an escape velocity, you know, to run away from the Earth. You must have this, I mean, minimum you must have this velocity, 11,200 meter per second. Huh? Near to 11,000, not easy to remember. Huh? Okay? Okay, now see. If the velocity of rocket is only 8,000, definitely cannot run away. Because you need minimum 11,200, right? Now only you have 8,000. So the rocket will be able to escape or not? Explain. Uh, the answer is no, cannot escape. Because its velocity is lower than 11,200. The velocity 8,009 is smaller than the minimum required velocity to run away from the Earth. Can I, can I understand? Can I? Okay, question number three. What is meant by escape? Same answer, lah. escape velocity. Huh? Okay, now let me ask someone see whether can answer or not. Carmen, okay, Carmen, where are you? Are you there, Carmen? Carmen, nah, please answer me, lah. can or not, Carmen? Yes, sir. Ah, Carmen, can you tell me what is escape velocity? Ah? Ah? What is escape velocity, Carmen? Ah? Minimum velocity needed by an object on uh -huh. the Earth's surface to overcome the gravitational to escape to the outer space. Yes, very good answer, Carmen. Carmen, you are from uh, IJC, correct not? Huh? Carmen? Are you from IJC? No. GBS, uh? Uh, I'm from MGS, yeah. Oh, MGS, sorry, uh, mix up already. Uh. MGS, uh, not IJC. Uh. 
โอเคแล้วสต็อปบอกว่าแล้วฮะมีสี่สามวันเว้นตายสองหนึ่งเดียวกูวะโอวันยินเนี่ยว่าตายแบบนี้จริงอาโอวันยินโอเยสเซอร์โอเคฮะโอเคสู้ไฟเกิดนะนักเต้นอนอตนะจัสตินโอเคอนอตโอเคโอเคฮะเจาวิงงเจาวิสู้ไฟโอเคเยสเซอร์โอเคอ่ะเกียนเลี้ยงเข้าไว้อยู่เกียนนั้นนักเต้นนอนอดอ่าเกียนเลี้ยงเกียนนั้นเกียนนักเต้นอ่าจินยี่ห้องว่าจะไปอยู่อ่าจินยี่ห้อง yes เกียนนะเซสเซลีซิสเซลีเกียนนั้นนักเต้น yes อ่า yes อ่า good โอเคจิงฮันจะน่าจะเซนฮะจิงฮันจิงฮันนอตเดชาบุตรหรือดีฮะคุยซันตันคุยซันโอเคอันนั้นเซนอาตันคุยซันอันนั้นเซนฮะอันนั้นเซนนอตอ่าโอเคฮะเราหนึ่งซีเช็คอีกฟิวโมเจนเดรี่โอเคเดรี่โกโอเคอันนั้นเซน yes sir เฮ้ยจิวลิงเขาว่าอยู่จิวลิงอันนั้นเซนอาจิวลิงอันนั้นเซนนะคาลินคาลินยาวนะคาลินยาวโอเคอันนั้นเซนอาคาลินคาลินยาวคอมเซนเดวิดอะไรดิเร็ Yes, sir. Can I understand? Can. Can I? Kevin, Kevin Lim. Can I understand? Kevin Lim. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Chua Michelle, how are you? Chua Michelle, are you there? Huh? Huh? Run away already. Chua Michelle. Refer to type. Okay, just type and see what she type there. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, Chua Michelle. Okay, who else? Ah, Mignish. Ah, Mignish. How are you? Ah, Mignish. Can you hear me? Ah, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Can I understand? Ah, Mignish. Yeah, can. 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 Okay. Ah. Hashini. Can I understand? Hashini. Ah, loud. You see your voice are loud and clear now. Ah, Hashini, very good. Okay. Let me, ah, let me, Chong. Okay, can I understand? Ah, let me, Chong. Four size one, can I not? Can I understand? Ah, let me, Chong. I remember you now because you see in front. Ah, Jerry's. Cheris, how about you? Cheris, can I understand? Yes, sir. Okay, nah, huh? Okay, nah. Yeah, okay. I I want to drink a little bit water, nah. You talk so much, so I so have to drink water. Okay, let's move on, nah. Okay, question number three. Ah, this is the same answer, lah. Escape velocity. Okay, now P. Relate the formula of escape velocity with the gravitational acceleration, the gravity. Ah, okay. Ah, now you explain. You listen. I explain here, lah. Okay, this is a formula for escape velocity, right? V equal to square root two g m over r. This is a escape velocity formula. And this formula is a gravitational acceleration. Ah, you want to find the gravitational acceleration formula, right? In lesson one, chapter three, lesson one, you learn this formula. G, the gravitational acceleration, right? Is G m over R square, right? Okay, you cross multiply G R square 
equal to gm uh, and then this side becomes second equation uh. Uh, this is a formula for gravitational acceleration uh. crossover become gr square equal to gm uh, this one is second equation you put this to substitute here because we know that this gm is gr square correct not gm so this one substitute here substitute here uh. this one become gr square so become like this uh. right cancel the r so finally you get this formula uh, this is another formula to find escape velocity. Okay, remember now, got two formula one, you know, this one is another formula to find the velocity, uh, square root two gr. Okay, but we seldom use this formula. Uh, okay, now the next one, I think they ask you to use this formula to calculate, uh, right? This one is the second formula to find the escape velocity. This one using gravity one. Uh, the first formula to find escape velocity is this one. Uh, this one never involves gravity. Uh, this is constant g, distant r. Then this is the second formula to find escape velocity, but this one involving gravity. Uh, okay, you see this question. Calculate the escape velocity of a rocket to escape from gravitational pull of the moon, from the moon, not from the earth. Uh, now it's on top of the moon. You want to escape from the moon. Given that the gravitational acceleration of moon is smaller, la, 0 0.25 times the gravity of Earth. Okay? On Earth here is 10. So on the moon is only 0 0.25 times of the gravity here. La. Okay? Radius of the moon is 1737 kilometer. I use this formula to Okay, the gravity is 0 0.25 times 10. On the moon, now gravity is only 0 0.25 times the gravity here, 10. Then, this is a radius of the moon now, 1737 kilometer at 30 change to meter now. So press carefully. This is the final answer. Now, you see, to escape from the moon now, sorry, easier now. You see, you only need 2,947 meter per second. Then you can escape from the moon and come back here already. From the moon, you want to come back to the Earth, right? You must also have the escape velocity, you know, to escape from the moon to come back here, right? That's why all these scientists are to do, they did a lot of calculation before they go to the moon and then come back, okay? That is the importance of study physics, understand? To explore the outer space, right, you need to have a lot of calculation. Nah? That's why the importance of study science is here, you know? Okay? All right, D. Another question. If the radius of the moon increased 1.3 times, let's say that we assume the moon now become bigger, 1.3 times bigger. So the only different same law, you see, uh, two G gravity still the same, uh, 0 0.25 times 10. Okay. And this radius now become because it's say 1.3 times by uh, right, 1.3 times just now, just now this value. Uh, okay. Uh, so you calculate. So now what is the conclusion uh, class? When you compare this one, compare this, uh, you look at the values, uh, what conclusion you can get? Uh, what conclusion you get? You see now, uh, you want to escape from the moon, surface of the moon, you must have this velocity minimum. Now the moon becomes bigger. Then to escape from the bigger size moon, now uh, you need this velocity. You know, what is the conclusion here? Uh, make this what is the conclusion? Uh, make this. Come on, make this. Uh, never listen. Uh, this point always sit behind, never listen. Uh, make this. Okay, the conclusion here is like this. You see, uh, the pickers, the, the size of the planet, right? Because you see here when the moon becomes bigger. Uh, the escape velocity also bigger, you know, 3,300 or 2,900 only. You see that? Uh, the bigger the size of the planet, right? You want to escape from it now, uh, you must go faster. Okay? When the size of the planet becomes bigger, uh, it's harder to escape from it because the gravitational pull is stronger. Okay? okay uh? All right. Next. Question number four. A group of astronauts want to take off from Mars to the Earth, want, want to leave the Mars and come back here. 
calculate the velocity required by the rocket to escape from the outer space to come back here lah. We didn't find the escape velocity lah. So use this formula lah. Okay, square root two g m over r g is constant value. M, uh, you want to escape from the mass, so you must take the mass of the mass. Uh, this one, this value, put here. Okay, and the distance, the radius, uh, 3390 kilometer at 30. Okay, use calculator. Calculate carefully, and then you get this value. And now you see here, mass is bigger, isn't it? The mass bigger. Now you see, escape velocity become higher. More difficult to escape from the mass compared to escape from the moon. Huh? All right, number five. Almost finished already, huh? number five. Okay. The magnitude of gravitational potential energy, this formula, remember not, uh, this is a formula for gravitational potential energy of the rocket mass is this on the surface of Cyrus. Cyrus is a planet now. Nah. Is this, uh, this is a uh, Gravitational potential energy value. Calculate the escape velocity of the rocket from the surface of Cyrus. You want to escape from this planet, huh? what is the escape velocity? Okay, the formula is like this, you know. Gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy equals zero. Why? Why like that? Why the gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy becomes zero? Why then? Okay, you see now, they are in opposite direction. Kinetic energy is going up. You see the rocket fly up, so kinetic energy. Then the gravitational potential is in the opposite direction. Come back, who you come down. So they are in opposite direction. So when you total up, now, it must become zero. Okay? One is going up, the other one coming down. One positive, one negative, one you add up must be zero. Another reason my why must be zero, right? Because the principle of conservation of energy, you know. Because initially on the Earth here, nah, there's no energy one. The energy is zero. Before the rocket flying, there's no energy, nah, right? So meaning that nah, the total energy must still remain as zero, you know, because the principle of conservation of energy say the total energy always remains the same. Once a rocket start to fly, so you have kinetic. Once you're leaving the Earth, then you have gravity energy, right? So one go up, one come down, but total up still must zero. Must conserve at zero, the total energy, nah? Okay, gravitational potential given already. So you just take the value put here. Kinetic energy is half mv square equals zero. Uh, this one put on the right side, become positive. Mass, bring over here to dy. Right, times two, then two times here, put here lock. The mass bring here to dy, and then square root. Finally, you get this answer. Now you see, this is 67,400 meter per second escape velocity to escape from the planet of Cyrus. Okay, then uh, this is question number five. Okay, question number six. Okay, let's see the question first. Uh. That is question number six. I think you have the question, right? The last question. I'll read the question here now. Calculate the magnitude of gravitational potential energy. You are asked to find the gravitational potential energy now of a rocket of mass 2.3 kilogram on the surface of Jupiter, another planet. Then, based on your answer, calculate the escape velocity of the rocket. Okay? Right? Read one more time. Now you read yourself. Huh? Cal calculate the magnitude of gravitational potential energy. You want to find the gravitational potential energy, right? Of the rocket mass is on the surface of Jupiter. Then, after you have the gravitational potential energy already, then you go and find the escape velocity. Huh? Okay, so two step here. First, find potential energy. Use a formula V equal to square root two g m o r. Correct not? Uh, after that, only you use half m v square kinetic energy formula to find velocity. Huh? Escape velocity. Let's look at the answer. Uh, 
points here. First, uh, use this formula to find gravitational potential energy, right? Negative, we solve it negative one, kinetic energy go up, positive come down, gravity come down, opposite direction, so negative. Huh? So big G constant, this value, mass, this is a mass of who? Huh? 1.7, 1.9 times 10 to the 27, this is a mass of, this one is 2.3, 10 to the power of 6, this is a mass of the rocket. I think this is the mass of the Cyrus. Huh? Never give here. Huh? Okay, this is the mass, mass of the planet. Okay. It's not given here. Huh? I think somewhere else. Huh? Right. Then divide by the distance. The distance also not given in the question. So you have to find. 69955 from the table uh, in your notes are uh, given a uh, given a notes given a note of table show what is the mass of the cyrus what is the radius of the cyrus or can find from the table one okay okay huh? okay then you use calculator calculate you get this answer right remember now uh, this is a mass of the planet of Cyrus. You can get from a, a table la. inside your notes, you can find. And this is the radius of the Cyrus planet, okay? The radius 66990 kilometer. 69900. Add three more zero change to meter. Okay, press carefully, you get this answer. This is a potential energy, right? Then use a formula. Gravitational potential plus the kinetic energy equals zero. Principle of conservation of energy, uh, energy remains as zero. Uh. Okay, this value put here, half mv square kinetic energy formula. Okay, now mass. Now take the mass of the rocket because the rocket wants to escape mass. Uh. Uh, then this one bring over. And finally, soft this equation so you get this. As your final answer. Okay. Then uh, 6.02 10 to the power 4 meter per second. Okay. So we have finished uh, this uh, man mix satellite question now. All finished already. Okay. We still have a little bit time. I think I can start chapter 3. Uh, okay. Someone send message here who cannot see. Mignish, I say yes, sir. Never say anything. Mignish very shy at this point. After finish the lesson, uh, I look back your chat, you know, the chat, because uh, in my computer, uh, they will record everything, one, you know, what you type there. Uh, sometimes I look at you very funny, you know, you all. Uh, you all chat to each other, I see, and uh, you ask silly question, very funny. Uh, I look at the chat there. Uh. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a picture uh, because I need to record something. Okay. You Tong, you Tong, are you okay? You Tong, are you there? Ah, you Tong, ah? say something now. Ah. Where are you? Ah? <laughs> you want to talk one all type of thing? Ah? You Tong, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Very shy. Ah. Okay, come, let's start new chapter. Ah. We start a little bit tonight. Ah. Okay, your see new chapter is here, right? This is blocking. Okay, chapter four. Okay, remember you know, see uh, in your form four physics, right? Your chapter one is chapter one is introduction, correct? Not 
Chapter 2 is forces and motion. You learn uh, a lot of calculation, right? Uh, Ticket tape, uh, all these things, uh, chapter 2. Chapter 3, chapter 3, uh, I don't know how you're going to learn. Uh, we have finished already in our hoo-ha, hoo-ha during the MCO period, right? I use uh, WhatsApp. Sometimes I record in the video. I put in the YouTube. I ask you all to watch, to learn it. I hope you all do, did that. Uh, huh? So chapter 3 finished already. No. Chapter 3, uh, we have only 3 lessons. 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. That's all. Finished already. Now it's chapter 4. Okay, chapter four, heat, one word to me. So you study heat, okay, heat now. Nah. Heat, you don't look at only one word, you know, they carry a lot of meaning one, you know, heat, okay. Your lesson one is understanding thermal equilibrium. Okay, let's look at this word first, huh? thermal. Thermal means uh, it's a scientific term for heat. Heat, uh, when we say heat, right? Heat energy. Heat actually is an English word. Scientific terms are uh, actually we don't use heat one more. We say thermal. Thermal means uh, heat. Equilibrium. Equilibrium means uh, equality. La. Equality. Okay? Heat equality. Thermal equilibrium. Okay? Okay, our first lesson is here. The difference between temperature and the heat. This one is lower form, I think you all learned already, right? The difference between temperature and heat, right? What is the difference between temperature and heat, right? Okay, I want to skew this one faster a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, first, temperature is a degree of hotness. Degree of hotness, remember that, huh? Temperature is degree of hotness. Heat is a form of energy. So first point, no problem. Huh? Temperature is degree of hotness. Heat is a form of energy. Okay, the second one, temperature is space quantity. Space quantity. Whereas heat is a derived quantity. I hope you also remember what is space quantity. Space quantity you learn in chapter one, right? There are seven, seven space quantity, correct not? Seven of them. Out of the seven, so we call it derived quantity, right? Derived quantity means uh, you must use formula to calculate to get one. Uh, that one is called derived quantity, okay? Right? Okay. Well, you may. how are you? Huh? 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 How are you? What's you may? I look, always look at your pictures, huh? you are wearing a mask, one, you know? <laughs> okay, number four. Temperature depends on kinetic energy. Uh, this one is important. Uh. The temperature, high or low temperature, is depends on the kinetic energy of the molecule. Okay, When the kinetic energy is very high, means the temperature is high. When the kinetic energy is low, a little bit kinetic energy means the temperature is low. So remember that. Okay, Temperature depends on kinetic energy, but heat Different, you know, you see, uh, heat different, heat de depends on not only temperature, also depends on the mass, also depends on the types of material, right? Okay, let me explain, uh, first time I explain to you this, uh, actually in the lesson two, you will learn more detail on this one. Heat energy uh, depends on the temperature, okay, common sense now. Uh, when the temperature is high, very hot, so this object will contain a lot of heat energy. Common sense, right? When this object, the temperature is very low, low temperature, uh, usually it will only contain less heat energy. Uh, that one is temperature. Okay, next one is mass, you know, mass. Okay, when the mass is big, it will also have more heat energy. Okay, I give one example. You all listen now. Nah. I don't draw here. You all listen at all. I have two cups of hot coffee, same temperature one, hot coffee, 100 degrees Celsius. One is small cup. The other one is bigger cup. The one is different in the mass already, right? Okay, the small cup coffee, 100 degree also. The bigger cup coffee, also 100 degree. Same temperature. But 
the bigger cup coffee uh, will contain more heat energy because the mass is bigger. Understand or not? The bigger the mass, uh, it will contain more heat energy one and all. Okay, another example, let me tell you. Uh, the spark. The spark, right? When the spark drop it on your skin uh, compared to a cup of hot oil, pour it on your skin, which one causes uh, more serious uh, injuries? Eh? Spark is 200 degrees Celsius. Okay? And the hot oil is only 100 degrees Celsius. When you pour it on your skin, uh, you will notice that the hot oil more than you just die. Okay, the same reason now. Uh, hot oil, bigger mass. Bigger mass carry more heat energy. The spark so small, right? Even temperature 200 the spark. But because of the small mass, the heat energy is less. That's why it don't cause so much uh, injury, understand? So this is the second factor, uh, mass. Uh, temperature affect the heat, mass affect the heat. And last one is the types of material. Okay, types of material, I take example. Uh, um, iron and wood, right? It's different types of material. Uh. Iron can heat up faster. Wood heat up very slow. Different material, you know. Okay? So meaning that iron uh, can heat up faster means the iron contain more heat energy, you know? different types of material. Uh. Okay, later on only you study this uh, chapter 2, lesson 2, you learn specific capacity and lesson 3, you study specific latent heat. These two very big topic. Uh. This one only see first. Uh. And the fourth one, temperature SI unit is Kelvin. This one cancer, not degree Celsius. Okay. SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Uh. Where is the heat? SI unit is Joule, right? Joule, this one okay, uh, huh? Joule, so different unit. And last, temperature measured by thermometer, right? Where is heat measured by Joule meter, okay? Joule meter to measure the energy, uh, Joule meter, right? Okay, now, Kelvin scale, okay? The temperature of substance in Kelvin, also known as absolute temperature, please highlight. When the temperature is absolute temperature, means uh, the temperature must be in unit Kelvin. Huh? Remember or not? Not degree Celsius. Uh. When the temperature is uh, mentioned in Kelvin, right? So we call it is absolute temperature. Absolute temperature means use a unit of Kelvin. Okay? Now, this formula. Celsius change to Kelvin, so you add 273. I think this one you learned already, right? From degree Celsius, you want to change to Kelvin, you plus 273. Whereas from Celsius, you want to change back to Kelvin, so you minus from 273, right? Add 273, you change Celsius to Kelvin. Celsius, you want to change back to Kel Kelvin, right? You minus from 273, right? Okay, take an example. Convert 120 Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, you add 273. Nah. So it becomes 393 Kelvin. Nah. Okay, 120 degree Celsius is same as 393 Kelvin. Okay, so add 273. This is okay. Nah. Thermal contact. Thermal contact means uh, when two objects in contact, then got heat transfer. Okay, this is object A. This is object B, they are touching each other. When they're touching each other, means are sure got different in temperature. Okay, most probably this one is hot. This one is cold. That's why you see the heat energy transfer here. Lah. When heat transfer, two objects contact, right? Got heat transfer, so we say these two objects are in thermal contact. So remember the terms are thermal contact means in contact with heat transfer, heat energy transfer. Okay, they are in thermal contact. Okay, huh? now, no, no, you can read here, the meaning of thermal contact. Two substances are said to be in thermal contact. Okay, highlight. When heat flow from one substance to another, it is in contact with the heat flow from one to another one. Huh? Heat usually flow according to temperature different. Uh, normally from hot to cold. 
heat flow from hot to cold substance. Okay, ah. Okay, now, the principle of thermal equilibrium. Okay. Now you learn another terms about thermal equilibrium. What is thermal equilibrium? Okay. You see these two objects. A, B, right? When they are in thermal contact, right? Okay, what happens is heat will transfer from A to B. At the same time, heat also will transfer from B to A, right? So both sides got heat transfer, you know. But at first, uh, they are in temperature, they are different now. Uh. But finally, when heat transfer here to here, here to here, finally now, uh, both of them will become same temperature. When they become same temperature now, so we say they reach thermal equilibrium. When they are in contact, heat transfer here and there, and finally, both of them having the same temperature already. Uh, because heat transfer, right? Finally, same temperature. When same temperature is achieved, right? So we say they are in the state of thermal equilibrium. Okay? Thermal equilibrium means uh, two objects in thermal contact achieve same temperature. One definition. Another one you see a little one is here. Two bodies are in thermal contact are to be in thermal equilibrium. I like when it reach the same temperature, uh, when the temperature become the same, so we say they are in thermal equilibrium. And one more definition. The net rate of heat transfer between the two bodies is zero. What is the meaning of second point? Uh? Okay, uh, I do a bit slowly here. The reason, uh, thermal equilibrium means uh, both of them reach same temperature. One, this one you can understand. The second one is, the net rate of heat transfer between the two bodies is zero, you know. Okay, the meaning is like this. Uh, net heat transfer means the amount of energy transfer from A to B and the amount of energy transfer from B to A. Both of them, uh, heat energy transfer, the amount are the same. So when you minus, when you want to find the net heat transfer, you minus, isn't it? So because they are same, right? A to B, same, same energy as B to A, they're same. So when you minus, you get the answer zero. So zero means uh, net heat transfer become zero. Okay? When a heat transfer A to B, B to A, same already, sure net heat transfer becomes zero one. You know, when you minus uh, same value, you minus your zero one, correct not? So remember, uh, if the question asks you, uh, what is the condition for thermal equilibrium to achieve? The conditions are what? First, they must achieve same temperature first. Second, they must have net heat transfer become zero between them. So remember that two are, uh, one is same temperature, the other one is the net heat transfer between them must become zero already, okay? Huh? Too far, okay? Huh? Understand or not? Huh? Or you may, do you understand? Yes. Or you can uh, Tan Cho Ming, do you understand? Uh, Tan Cho Ming. Tan Cho Ming, no sound already. Huh? You Tong, do you understand? This type one, uh, Tan Cho Ming type, yes sir, or yes sir only. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, okay, move on. Huh? Next one is how a liquid in class thermometer work. Huh? This one came up in the SPM many times already, you know. They asked you to explain. Okay, when you are using a thermometer to measure the temperature of hot water, huh? they ask you to explain huh, how the thing works, you know. You must use a concept of heat transfer, use a concept of thermal equilibrium, understand? Okay, uh, you see the answer given? Okay, the answer here, uh, when a thermometer is in thermal contact with the substance, for example, the hot water, uh, you put inside water, so they are in contact, right? Okay, heat flow from the hot water to the thermometer or mercury, one mark. You write this, you get one mark already. Immediately, the heat flow from hot water to the thermometer, the mercury, right? So then, 
my house internet not so stable. Huh? Okay. When thermal equilibrium is rich, okay. Finally, now when you wait for a few minutes, uh, let's say five minutes, ten minutes, right? Thermal equilibrium is rich, right? Then the net rate of heat transfer between the two substances becomes zero. Okay, meaning that is like this, you know. Many of you are uh, you have the wrong impression when you know when you put this thermometer inside the hot water, uh, many of you would think heat only move from hot water. Right? Heat move from hot water to the mercury, right? Not heat will move to the mercury, right? But we cannot deny now uh, in opposite direction now uh, a certain amount of heat also will come out, come out from the mercury, come out to the hot water one, you know, both happen in both direction one. Right? Heat also can come out. Okay, heat can go in, also can come out one. Understand? Heat can go in from the hot water to the mercury and also can come out from the mercury, come out. Okay, now when the heat go in and the heat come out, become the same. When you minus, you get zero. So that is called net heat transfer becomes zero. Understand? This side the sentence is like this. Lah. When thermal equilibrium reduces, the net heat transfer becomes zero. Ah. And the temperature of the thermometer, same as the temperature of the water, lah, finally, correct? Not? Huh? Okay, huh? So, hands showing its temperature. The thermometer also read the temperature of hot water. When you read the temperature of the thermometer, it also show the temperature of the hot water. Correct not? Yeah. <coughs> okay, a little bit more. Huh? Uh, this thing very difficult to explain to you. One. Okay. Basic principle to construct a thermometer okay uh, maybe in your experience uh, in your life right you only know that uh, thermometer is a glass tube then you put mercury inside correct not you put mercury some you put uh, alcohol correct not you see red color blue color one uh, the one is alcohol when you see golden color or silver color right uh, the one is mercury right so but there's a lot of scientific insight, you know. Okay, you see now. Nah? Two important principles to construct a thermometer. To build a thermometer, now nah, you have two important principles here. Okay, the first one, nah, please highlight this is very difficult to understand. One specific thermometric property. What is first concept is first principle now nah, is a specific thermometric property. What is the meaning of specific thermometric property? Okay, the answer is here. It's a physical quantity varies. Varies means change, huh? change with the temperature. Huh? Okay, you look at here. Lah. I'll give you one example. Lah. This thermometer, when the temperature is 20 degrees, you see the mercury is here. Right? So low mercury is here. When you put inside the hot water 80 degrees, you see the temperature, the thermometer the mercury go up. So many times here you see nah, the volume of the mercury increase when the temperature increases, right? Nah? So this is a concept used. Nah. The volume of the mercury nah, you will expand, right? Nah? Volume of mercury increase when the temperature increases. Understand? Nah? So this is meant by specific thermometric property. It's a physical quantity which varies with the temperature. Understand? Uh, in this case, uh, it's a volume of mercury. Uh, because the volume of mercury changes follow the temperature. When the temperature is high, the volume of mercury becomes more. It will expand. Right? Not? Hey, now you understand what is specific thermometric property or not? It's a physical quantity varies with the temperature. Uh, can be volume, can be pressure, so many. Uh, okay, this is one example. Okay? Cherish, so far understand or not? Ah, uh, Cherish? Understand, sir. Understand, sir. Uh, okay, good. Hashini, okay, understand? Uh, Hashini. Understand, sir. Understand, ah? Uh? Can, can understand. Chan Yuan Yi, understand? Ah, uh, Chan Yuan Yi? Yes. Can, ah? Uh? 
Huisan dan Huisan understand? Ah, dan yes. Huisan. Okay, lah, understand lah. Okay, come, let's move on. Okay, we look at these few example lah. Huh? Too big, too big, cannot see. Okay, okay. The first thermo, there are four types of thermometer in the world. Ah, huh? one is mercury thermometer. Mercury thermometer. This is normal one. Ah, huh? mercury thermometer, right? Okay. The second one is resistant thermometer. This one I think you never see in your life before, lah. Huh? When you go to university, only you see. Ah, huh? third, thermocouple thermometer. Okay. And the fourth is gas thermometer. There are four types of thermometer, you know. But I think in your life, you only see this one only. Mercury thermometer. Okay. For mercury thermometer, right, the thermometric property that is important now is the volume of the mercury varies with the temperature I explained to you just now, right? The volume of mercury will change according to the change in the temperature, like you see here now. When temperature go up, the volume of mercury go up, right not? Uh, so this is a thermometric property for mercury thermometer. Okay. Then the second one is resistant thermometer. You never see before, never mind. You learn a little bit now. Lah. Resistant thermometer. What happens here is electrical resistance of the wire varies with the temperature. Meaning that is this. Lah. When the temperature of the wire go high, the resistance of the wire become higher. It's a resistant. Huh? Resistance means uh, something in the wire trying to stop the current from flowing. That is called resistance. To resist, resist the flows of current. Okay. So in most of the cases, uh, normally it's like this one now. Uh, when the temperature is higher, the resistance becomes higher. So based on the resistance value, you can estimate the temperature. Uh, okay. When the resistance is high, mean the temperature is high. When the resistance is low, mean the temperature is low. You can use it to measure temperature. Understand? Okay. Huh? Third, thermocouple thermometer. Okay. Thermocouple thermometer, same concept. Lah. They're using electromotive force, EMF. Okay. Uh, right now, you don't need to know what is electromotive force first. Okay. You can just assume it as voltage. What? Electromotive force, you can assume it as voltage. Lah, what, huh? okay. The electromotive force, the voltage, huh, varies with the temperature. Example is when the temperature is high, the reading of the watt meter also becomes high. Okay. When the temperature is low, the reading of the watt meter also low. Uh, meaning by looking at the watt meter reading, you can estimate the temperature. When the voltage is high, temperature is high. When the voltage is low, temperature is low. Uh, you can just use a watt meter to measure the temperature. That is the meaning of thermocouple thermometer. Understand? Question. Understand? Understand. Understand. Uh, understand. Yeah. Next, gas thermometer. Okay. This thermometer got gas inside one. Gas is something to do with the pressure. Lah. Gas pressure varies with the temperature. This is the pressure of the gas inside the thermometer. Okay. Example, you see, uh, when the temperature is high, the pressure of the gas inside becomes high. Understand? When the temperature is low, the pressure is also low. So meaning that uh, we can estimate uh, when you see the pressure is high, mean the temperature is high. When the pressure is low, means the temperature is low. We can use a change in the pressure of the gas to measure the temperature. Understand? Okay. So there are four types of thermometer. Uh, remember, uh, mercury, resistant, thermocouple, and gas, all with the different, different thermometric property. One, you know, this one you have to memorize, you know. Okay. These are the four thermometric property. These are the four things will change according to the temperature. Understand? Okay. And last, I want to finish number two, then I'll let you go already. Okay. Okay, number two is calibration of thermometer. Okay, highlight the words calibration. What is calibration now? 
Calibration means uh, it's a process of marking up the skill on the thermometer, right? Okay, like this. When you, you want to make a thermometer, right? You put a, make use a glass steel, put some mercury inside. Not finish yet, you know. There's another thing very important that uh, you have mercury inside the glass, right? You must mark the skill. To mark the skill uh, is not an easy job, you know, very difficult one. Okay, the process of marking up the skill of the thermometer uh, is called calibration. Okay, I like uh, calibration of thermometer. To calibrate means to mark the skill. This is a process of marking up the skill on the thermometer. Okay. To mark the skill, so we use two concepts here. Lower fixed point. One is upper fixed point. Lower fixed point is zero. This, we take this temperature as a starting point. Lah. Lower fixed point, zero degree. Upper fixed point, 100 degree. Ah, these two are fixed already. We use these two fixed first. Zero, 100. Okay? Zero is the melting point, melting temperature of ice. Okay? The melting temperature of ice is lower fixed point, lah, zero. Whereas the upper fixed point, 100 degree, is a temperature of steam, not hot water, lah, not boiling water, lah, it's a steam. It's a temperature of the steam. Temperature of the steam is upper fixed point. Temperature of the melting, melting point of the pure ice is lower fixed point. Lah. Okay, now you see the process here. I use this diagram to explain to you. Lah, huh? To calibrate the skill, why you need to do two steps. Okay, first, this is a newly a new thermometer, no skill one, no skill here yet. You got thermometer, your mercury inside. What you do is you put inside the eyes. This is the eyes. Okay. You put inside the eyes, the mercury will go up a little bit. Uh, let's say mercury go up here. Go up only here. Uh, so remember, you mark here zero. This is lower fixed point. You put inside the eyes, uh, the mercury stop at here. I mean this one is zero. Uh. Okay. Mm. So it's zero, uh, okay. Then after that, same thermometer, put it inside the hot steam. Uh, this is a steam. So when you put this thermometer here, immediately you see the mercury go up. Go up until here. Uh, then you mark quickly, this is 100. So now you have two points already. One is zero, zero, one is 100. You got two already, right? Like upper fixed point, 100. Lower six point zero you have already. And uh, then only you divide it equally to 100 small division. Uh, then your job is finished. You got where is 100, where is 0, then you divide equally to 100 small division. And then the rest is follow. Uh, that is the job to calibrate a thermometer. Understand? Uh? Huh? Yeah? I think okay. Lah. Let me ask some question first uh, before I let you go. Uh. I don't want to continue further. Uh. I stop here. Uh. It's almost 10 o'clock already. Okay. Someone asked me, teacher, teach very good, can understand who Tan Choming. <laughs> Thank you, Tan Choming. And this is. Yu Tong Ken, Yu Tong Second, Michelle Chua, Ying Han, Hong Wan Yun, all this. Huh? Okay, uh, class, so far, this uh, chapter 4, uh, you can understand or not. First, uh, you study what is the difference between the temperature and heat, temperature and heat, right? Okay, then, second one, you learn what is. Uh, Thermal equilibrium, correct not? Thermal equilibrium. Okay, uh, this one I want to test you. Uh. When I call your name, you answer my question. Uh. Uh, Lim Zi Liang, Lim Zek L. Lim, are you there? Lim Zi Liang? Lim Zi Liang? No sound. God, uh, Lim Zi Liang, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Lima, can you roughly tell yes, me? Uh, 
Can you roughly tell me what is uh, thermal equilibrium? Uh? Thermal equilibrium is what? Uh, Lim? Uh, what is thermal equilibrium? Aka, aka, la. You just tell me what you know. Huh? Uh, the more equally premise, what? what is the meaning? Terry, Terry, go. Where are you? Ah, uh, Terry? What is the more equally premise? Yeah, now my. Uh, Terry, answer. What is thermal equilibrium? Both objects reach the same temperature. Yes, correct. When both objects in thermal contact reach the same temperature. And one more. One more is what? Net rate of heat transfer between the two bodies is zero. <laughs> yes, very good answer. The net heat transfer between the Two objects become zero. The net heat transfer becomes zero. Huh? Okay. Next, uh, next one I want to ask is uh, what is the principle? What is the meaning of thermometric property? What is that? Thermometric property is what? Uh, Mandy, Mandy Te. You try ma, Mandy Te, where are you? Hey, chu lai xia ma, Mandy. No, ah. You want to come out? Yeah, never mind, ah. Uh, you may wait. You may wait. You say, ma. No, uh, also not in an my Tan Hui San, Tan Hui San, you say that Tan Hui San. Hui San, uh. physical quantity which different with temperature. Varies with temperature. Okay, correct. The answer is very good. It's a physical quantity which varies with the temperature. Or you can just say like it's a physical quantity change with the change in temperature. Understand, huh? Okay, next question. Uh, next question I will see here. Uh. Justin, uh, Justin Yip. The name is always on top one. Justin, are you there? Justin? Uh, yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Justin, uh, mm. can you tell me how many types of uh, thermom thermometer we have? Four types. Oh, can you name those four types? Mercury thermometer, resistant thermometer. Thermal copper thermometer and gas thermometer. And one more? Gas thermometer. Yes, correct. Four types of thermometer. Nah? Okay, uh, then I want to ask another one is Kong Fan Sin. Are you there? Kong Fan Sin? Kong, ah? Kong Fan Sin, are you there now? <coughs> ah, yes, Kong teacher. Kong, uh, yes. Kong. You're from IJC, uh, IJC or GBS? Uh? GBS. GBS, uh, Kong. Okay, what is the thermometric? Uh. Listen to my question. Uh, what is the thermometric properties of gas thermometer? Uh, uh, later, uh, teacher, I yeah, find. Later. Okay, fine, you go and find. <laughs> what is the thermometric property of gas thermometer okay come gas pressure varies with temperature yes correct very good okay thank you all right next kailin yao kailin yao are you there a swimmer kailin yao where are you can you come out or kailin yao yes teacher ah okay now you answer my question huh? Okay, what is a thermometric prop? What is a thermometric property for mercury thermometer? What is the thermometric property of mercury thermometer? Huh? Just say again. What is a thermometric property of 
mercury thermometer. Huh? Volume yeah. of mercury varies with temperature. Yes, correct. It's a volume of the mercury varies with the temperature. Okay, next. Next is uh, Darren To. Okay, Darren To, are you there? Uh, Darren? Hey, Darren, uh, come out a bit. Uh. Darren To, are you there? This fellow hibernating or sleeping, uh, Darren To. Huh? Okay, now my Xiao, Xiao Wei, uh, Darren. Darren, the one who talk one always type to new one. Type the yes, sir. Okay. Darren, uh, you don't want to talk near mine. You can just type there, uh, you tell me. What is the thermometric property for thermocouple thermometer? What is the thermometric property of thermo, thermocouple thermometer? Uh, you don't want to talk, or you then you type there. But you type there, you put everyone, uh, you don't put privately, you understand? Uh, when you type, you put there everyone. So that everyone see your answer. Huh? Darren? You want to talk or you want to type? No, uh, no sound. Okay, now my, I call another one. Huh? Cicely. Cicely? Can you answer? Yes. Can you answer what is the thermometric property of thermocouple thermometer? What is the answer? Electromotive force varies with temperature. Yes. Electromotive force varies with temperature. What is Aka Aka? What is electromotive force? Ah? Cicely? What is electromotive force? Ne? Aka Aka is what? What is electromotive force, Cecily? Huh? Chao Xiang, Ong Chao Xiang. What is electromotive force? Uh, roughly, like, is what, what is the meaning of electromotive force? It's a voltage, correct not? Voltage, huh? Okay, last question. Yu Tong, are you there? Where is Yu Tong? Yu Tong. Yu Tong, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you Tom, what is the thermometric property for resistant thermometer? Huh? What is the thermometric property of resistant thermometer? Electrical resistance of a wire varies with temperature. Yes, very good answer. Is a resistance varies with the temperature? Huh? Okay. Next, next question. I want to turn to another page. I want to see the name. Tan Cho Ming. Are you there? Tan Cho Ming. Tan Cho Ming. You come out or what? Tan Cho Ming. Ah, Tan Cho Ming. Ah. You prefer to type on your mind. Like I call. Chiu Ling. Chiu Ling. Are you there? Chiuling? Yes, okay, Chiuling. Uh, uh, what is the meaning of calibration? Calibration meaning is what? What is the meaning the of calibration? Process of making up a scale on a thermometer. Yes, correct. Process of marking up the scale of thermometer. Huh? Okay. And next. Oh, Ho Wan Xin. Oh, are you there? Ah, uh, Ho Wan Yin. Can you come out a while now? Ah, uh, Ho Wan Yin. Now, my lady, what come out? Ah, uh, Ho Wan Yin, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, what is lower fixed point? Ah, uh? lower fixed point is what? Ice yes, melting temperature of ice. Okay, and one more question: What is uh, upper fixed point? The temperature of steam. 
temperature of temperature of who temperature of the steam granite okay lah i think i don't want to ask so much question you always get to be lah okay uh thank you very much for follow this lesson for the second time in this week okay so i hope to see you again next week lah, huh? okay so i will still upload the video in in the youtube lah, huh? for those who did not attend this lesson i just tell them to go and see the lesson in the youtube lah, huh? okay so take good care of yourself remember to study also lah, okay take good care of yourself and then also study lah. okay bye bye Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, okay, sir. Bye. Sure. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay bye. Yeah, you can go. go. go out Thank one, you, one. sir. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye, everyone.